All right, my name is um, Kenny Brooks. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I've been in sales for like a long time, door to door. So um, first of all, I just want to give y'all a hand just for bringing me out here, give Lee, everybody a hand. <laughs> One thing about door to door, I, like I told I always get introduced with like this video because some people are familiar with it, some people not, but um, this, it's like a blessing just because like number one, I started doing door-to-door -door sales at the age of 12 like on an accident because my mother couldn't afford for me to uh, get no basketball shoes. So like growing up in Detroit, like through poverty, and I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all probably got the same story and <clears throat> y'all probably can relate, but I remember growing like, uh, I, I went from like four foot nine to like five foot like four. I grew like five or six inches the next day. And I was like, no, for real, I was hanging out the bed and everything. I thought, I thought my mama switched beds or something. So anyway, I, like, I was like, man, I got to play basketball. Because like in Detroit, I was doing like negative things at 12. You know, we bad. We, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I was always like the black sheep of the family. No offense, I'm black. But yeah, I was like the black sheep of the family. I was always the party goer, the funny guy. You know what I mean? So anyway, I was like, I tried out for basketball, but my, I didn't have no basketball shoe. I had on, I don't even know what kind of shoes they was. I know I had on some slip and slide records before Trick Daddy. I was like sliding in the gym out to the lunchroom and I was like humiliated. My friends was talking about me. So I came home from school and I was like, you know what, I'm not going back to practice till I get some basketball shoes. So I asked my mom, cause she give me like some cheap basketball shoes. And she was like, she couldn't afford it. So anyway, like, I, I, on, the way, on the way going to school the next day, I seen a telephone pole. We got like telephone poles in Detroit. And they had a um, sign saying that you could make $50 a week delivering Detroit News and Free Press. Y'all know like paper routes, right? Where, like one person carried a wagon, the other one delivered it to the addresses. So I became like a door-to-door -door salesperson on an accident. And this story is crazy because like, from 12 years old, I developed something that I carry with me for the rest of my life. And we all like accustomed to that because like one thing I learned, like I heard Zig Ziglar say, he said salespeople ain't born, they made, they made. And I feel like I was born to like do this. Like it was just a gift I just, just developed like at the age of 12 because I remember my grandmother told me at 12 years old, she said that it ain't your fault if you was born poor, but if you over the age of 18 and you die poor, that's your fault because you have something to do with that. So that I, that I, I carry that like, for the rest of my life, even my kids now, I like teach them stuff that like school can't teach you. Like I feel like like door to door should have been like a curriculum in school. You know what I mean? Because you learn some so much stuff. Some people die at the age uh, uh, 18 and they don't get buried till they 70 because you passed away a long time ago. And I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all in this room understand that going door to door is a mental thing. It's 90% mental and it's 10% physical. And that's what I learned at 12 years old. So anyway, I signed up for the job. Boom. I was like, my goal was to make 50 bucks to get these shoes. And I was going to quit, you know, like just to go play basketball. So anyway, we go into like houses and everything. Like we, the, we, the first 10 houses I do, I'd like throw the newspaper at the address and then the first 10, the next 10 houses he'd throw them and I'd carry the wagon. So we throw it to this one person house because his name was on the address. And he came out cussing us out, me and my coworker. He's like, get off my property. I'm going to have to call the police. You throw another paper, I'm going to beat. Like he just was tripping. And me and my coworker looked at, because like I'm from Detroit. We didn't sell in Detroit. We, I mean, we didn't deliver the paper in Detroit. We went to the suburbs. So me and my coworker, we both was black. We looked at him, we was like, this dude racist. And we as white, he wouldn't have said that. Anyway, that's what tells you like your perception is your reality. So my coworker was ready to fight him. And I was like, no, I got it, I got it. And I just, I was like, sir. And I, I use this joke still to this day when I knock on doors. And I use it at 12 years old. So anyway, I was like, sir, can I ask you one question? He was like, what? I was like, you got kids? He was like, yeah. I was like, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, you want to spank both of them, right? He was like, no, I was like, well, don't spank us. I'm sorry about the bad performance. Let me just call my stupid advisor. And he started laughing. And then we upgraded him like Beyonce and I ended up giving him like a, a year subscription. So anyway, my coworker went and told the, the, like, the manager and they made me a salesperson. So I went from making like $50 like a week to like not even quitting. I just kept doing like door to door, you know what I mean? Cause I was like making like 300 to $500 a week at the age of 12, I was making more money than my mom. That's when I found out like door to door, there ain't no ceiling of your income. You can go to sleep broke, wake up a millionaire, you know what I'm saying? You go for welfare to Rockefeller because, and that's what I found out, I was like, I would never punch a clock unless I swung on Flavor Flav, because I was like, I can't really, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I, and like, I, like it was too much money in door to door. It's at 12 years old, so fast forward to like, how this happened, so anyway, my grandmother ended up passing away like when I was 18 years old, I was like a senior in high school. And I had dropped out of school, like I ain't even finished school or nothing. I had dropped out, I was depressed because like she was a big part of my life. And like when she passed away, I just dropped out of school. So then 
Like a year later, my brother ended up, I was like homeless. I was like living house to house. Like my mother, I remember I worked at McDonald's, I think it was McDonald's or Burger King. I worked there for like 30 minutes. I was like, I gotta try something new. But I quit, cause I was like, I couldn't just fathom like one guy taking more breaks than a Kit Kat and I'm working my butt off and we both getting $7 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't imagine like just working for someone. Like, you know what I mean? So, and I like I already had the mindset of like door to door. Like I learned a lot, like, you know, I learned being a people person, you gotta have enthusiasm, you gotta have confidence. I learned all of this. It's just that I was like, you know what, I probably gotta get back into sales. So anyway, I was like homeless. And then my brother ended up calling me. He well, we were staying with our uncle and he called me like to the room. He was like, look, my friend, he got this, uh, he, he just went to this door to door traveling job. They travel state to state selling like organic cleaner. And he said his first week he ain't got no sales experience. He made like over $1,200. I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, you should do it. Remember how he was making all that money at like 12 to 14 years old? So anyway, I was like, come on. Anyway, I, like I went the first, I, I remember I rode the bus from Detroit for three days and I told myself on that bus, I said, this is the brokers I'm gonna ever be. I'm gonna go on the bus, but I'm gonna leave like on a plane or I'm gonna I'm 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 drive back home. Like, cause my, my parents didn't even want me to leave. My mom, she was like, no, nah, they gonna leave you stranded. Like she was just saying like, this is like sex trafficking. They, I was just hearing all type of <laughs> negative stuff. Yeah, like, so anyway, I, I'm, I was like, so when I got there, my first week, I worked like three days and I made like 800 bucks. Like that was like probably like the most money I made because so when I was a little kid. So like coming from Detroit, making 800 bucks in like three days, that was like a blessing to me. So I remember my first paycheck, I invested in myself. I, I had bought, I spent like 400 of those dollars at Barnes and Nobles on books. Like one of my first books was uh, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I remember this saying, he said, if you want to gather the honey, don't kick over the beehive. And that stuck with me. Like that's made me actually just c control like my inner circle, like my thinking, my mindset, because like at the end of the day, it's all about mindset. So I just noticed like, I just started feeding myself more knowledge and education because at the end of the day, like it don't matter the product you selling. So I say that to say this in this room, like if you like new or you've been selling or you been, you've been on a roll like toilet paper, you done had a high week, you done had a high month, you done had a high year, like it's all about mindset, you know what I'm saying? And like one of my favorite books that I read to really take me to the next level was The Magic of Thinking Big because a lot of people like, I remember like you got to separate yourself. Like um, Lee was telling me somebody uh, so like broke the record, like 50 some deals or something like that in a month and I'm looking at like, Th that's amazing, but like some people get comfortable, you know what I mean? Like some people, you know how it is, like you will make a lot of money that you never made before, then you'd be like, you know what, I'm good this week. I'm good, this, you know, now, now you gotta play a mind game with yourself. Okay, I did 50 something this month, I'm about to do 50 something in one day. I'm about to do 50 something in an hour, you know what I'm saying? It don't, like, it's, it's a numbers game, you know, time ain't your best friend when you waste it, and that's what I did. I like, I broke, like, that's why I told, I said, I've been, I did door-to-door -door sales for, fi I got 15 years of experience, probably more than that, because I did door-to-door -door when I was 12 years old to 14, then I got back in it when I was 19, till I was like 30, like 33 or something like that. I stopped doing it when I went, well, I went viral, like this video, I went viral 2010, this video is super old, but I went viral 2010. I didn't find out I went viral till like 2017. That's when I got out of the sales game and moved to LA and started uh, building my brand and started my social media and monetizing everything and starting TikTok, Instagram, all that. But to make a long story short, what I love about Door to Door is that it allowed me to like find myself you know what I mean? And give back to like the door to door community, like just far as like knowledge, because experience is the best teacher, because I learned so much stuff. I'm writing a TV show right now called Door to Door Chronicles, because I got so many stories that it could have been adversity that I made a success out of it. Like I got one story called the N word. I got another story called Indian kidnapping, how I sold Jamie Foxx, how I went viral. Because y'all, a lot of people saw this video. It, it had over 300 million views, but people don't know this day. Like this video, if I wouldn't have gave up, that video wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't be in here talking to y'all because people don't know that I had just got kidnapped by Indians to selling Jamie Foxx to his neighbor putting me on YouTube. And people don't understand that. That's why a lot of people, they don't know my story. They just be like, oh, this is a funny dude. He got enthusiasm, he got personality. No, like I, that was, people was laughing at my pain. Like, heart because he who suffer remembers and I and I and my why was that I'm not gonna give up I was gonna hang in there like shingles and drywall I'm already out here and I knew the difference between a rejection and an objection that's another thing too like and, and I, I like I do a lot of training with like solar companies and like real estate companies and, and anybody that do door-to-door -door because like my personality like at the end of the day you ain't even got to be a comedian you ain't even got to be funny but you gotta have confidence in what you're doing. At the end of the day, the first person you're gonna sell, like I'm not a prostitute, but I'm gonna sell myself. 
Because that's the first person you gotta sell. You gotta sell you on that you can do the job. You, got, you work for the best company in the world. You believe in yourself. Once you sell that, it's, it's easy. The sales are already out there. And that's what I like. I do a lot of blitz. I'll be going, selling, I'm tra training different solar companies. And like when I, I made up a joke just off of solar, like everybody been going green like a Ninja Turtle. Yeah. They laugh. You know what I mean? Then as soon as they, yeah. You know how your, you know how that, your, your electric bill go up and down like a 6'4 Impala? Yeah, we gonna, yeah, we gonna just keep it at one, yeah, at one price. You do like saving money, right? Yeah, because I ain't come for no money. That's why we ain't come with a ski mask armor truck. I've been saving everybody money. You starting to like me a little bit, like 50 cent? How far are we halfway there? Yeah, so I mean, just personality. When everything else fails, enthusiasm sells. But like I said, you ain't even gotta be a comedian. You ain't even gotta be funny. Dale Carnegie said you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And see, the eyes is the window to the soul. But how I learned that is that I practiced. I perfected my craft. I kept studying. I had product knowledge. I learned everything I needed to learn. And then every objection that I heard at the door, I took it and I wrote a, a comeback down that was funny, that would buy more time for this prospect or this customer or this consumer to listen to me. When they said, oh, I'm not interested. Yeah, my mom told my dad that, but now I'm late I was born. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I ain't got no time. You, ever, you go to church? Yeah, you ever seen a watch get baptized? Yeah, we gonna save you time. I'm like Nicolas Cage, I'm going to 60 seconds. Yeah, so whatever you had to say, I was already on it. I was on point like Stacey Adams. So anyway, to fast forward, like how this video happened, so to make a long story short, so I, I was buying a lot of books, boom. So I was like the top salesperson. Like I said, I started, I got in door to door 2004 with this, the door to door traveling, selling the cleaner. And I, like I said, I was on the bus for three days. and. Um, I was, I was like the top salesperson from 2004 to 2009 until this one day this guy beat me. Shout out to Chris of mine. He had more sales than me in that day, that day because like and, and when I was selling a cleaning product, we, get, we got paid off for three different ways. We got paid off a of commission, bets, and bonuses. So we had a sliding commission scale. You had to have a certain amount of sales at the end of the week to get 50%. So we had to write like a lot of sales in one day. We had to close a lot of deals in one day. Number two, is we got paid off of bonuses. They had like bonuses up, like for the, like the the top salesperson, the one that you know the the one that have the you know the most doors. They knock just to make sure that you know because Zig Ziglar said as soon as a person get a job, they quit looking for work. So they was giving you incentives in case people was giving up in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, oh, I work this neighborhood, and they ain't, and then you put somebody right over them, and they getting sales that you said you didn't work. You know what I mean? So just so you want to trick the system. So anyway, to make a long story short, that was another way we got paid by bonuses. Then we got paid by our bets. We used to bet different salespeople, like, because competition bring the best out. So anyway, this one guy named Chris beat me this day. Like I said, I was a top salesperson for like five years, because like, you could see why I was selling personality. I believed in myself. I already knew that I was going to beat everybody in the room before we even knocked on the door. I give people here, so I could be like, look, I'll give you a 10 sales spot. Like, you, go, you, could, you could stop at 20, because I'm going to beat you. I'm going to have 30, 40 sales. Like, that's how I was thinking. I was already telling people that, so they was terrified. Anyway, make a long story short, this guy came in with like 48 sales. He, he came and he beat me. I was, mad. I was like mad, because he, like he never asked me, never in his life, how many sales I had. And then he asked me that one day, he said, I said, ooh, you must have had a good day. You never asked Kenny Brooks how many sales he had. I said, I had a slow day, I had like 28. This is like 28 sales in one day. He was like, oh, I had 40 some sales, I beat Kenny. So I was like, you know, where you work at? He was like, he worked at Indian Reservation. So the next day, I raised my hand in the meeting. I was like, uh, I told the company owner, I said, look, I got to bet. He was like, well, I said, I bet Chris of mine that I will go work the same neighborhood he worked and I will double his sales. You have 40, what, 43? I'm going to have 86. And then he was like, how much you want to bet? I said, I bet him 500 bucks. So boom, the next day, they dropped me off. It was, I don't, anybody, raise your hand, you familiar with um, California, Southern California? Y'all heard of Temecula? Yeah. Okay, so they dropped me off. We we were staying in like uh, L.A. I forgot we was like we weren't staying in L.A. We were staying like in the suburbs of L.A. Like I forgot like Hollywood or something like that. But we worked like we was in the valley. So we went to uh, no, we was in the, in the valley. I forgot where we was at. Anyway, I've been in California so long. I apologize. But anyway, we we, we worked Temecula, and it was an Indian reservation called Pachanga. I remember it like yesterday. So they dropped me off. The first door I knocked on. Dude, like he was outside washing his car, so I opened, I was opening up his gate about to walk in. I was like, how you doing? Cause like, it's like four steps to a sales talk. So this is another like, if, if tools too, if you wanna like, um, write this down and keep this in your memory, it's four steps to a sales talk. The first step is approach. Yeah, you gotta have an amazing approach. Like, it's basically an icebreaker. Like one of my favorite approach, like today, what's today, what's today is? As soon as I knock on the door, happy Friday. Blame it on the neighbors, just a good approach. You know a lot of, 
Yeah, a lot of your neighbors, they've been loving me like fat kids love cake. You know, just a, a good approach. That's the first step to a sales talk, an icebreaker. But the approach really is start with the knock. Like, I'm a knock like this. That's my knock. That's, gonna, that's the start, that's the first impression. First impression is everlasting. Like, I just went out with a solar company like a month ago, DECA, and they, they sell people's knocking like this. I said, oh, that's police, get down, get down. Like, you, you like your, pro, your knock is everything. So your approach is the knock, it start with that doom, 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 doom. People gonna run to the door like, oh, that's my cousin. And they see you, they like, oh, you ain't my cousin. Yes, I am, I just got a suntan. Yeah, this morning I had blonde hair and blue eyes. It's hotter than Baywatch, you know. Anyway, so you gotta just have a good approach, you know. They gonna run to the door, but, so boom, that's the first step. Your second step is your introduction. Now you're introducing yourself or the product that you're selling. By the way, my name is Slim Shady. I'm just joking. But by the way, my name is Kenny. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. You ever been there? Yeah, don't go there. It's so cold out there. I seen Superman catching a cab. You know what I mean? You could tell them where you're from. Raise your hand if all of y'all in this room from Las Vegas. So a lot of y'all not from Vegas, right? I will be telling them that. By the way, my name is such such. I'm from, you know, South Carolina. I'm from Alaska. It's colder than polar bear toenails. I'm from where, wherever you from. Yeah, I just walked them out to make you smile. That's the second thing. The third step is demonstration. Demonstration service. Now you're demonstrating your product. You're servicing them. Now this is where product knowledge come in. Yeah, you ever thought about going, getting into solar? Yeah, we got the best things. since, you know, yeah, everybody, everybody been getting more energy than Thomas Edison in this area. You don't want to miss out, like Shaq at the free throw line. You know, that, that's the third step. You know, demonstration service. Product knowledge, it's all them three things. Then the last step is close. Action close, that's, you close the deal. So how it's set up, I understand how solar work a little bit. You know, you got the people that set appointments and then you got the people that close the deals, am I right? Cause like everybody I've been with so far, that's what they've been telling me. Anyway, to make a long story short, so the first door I knocked on, the guy was washing his car. I walked up, like I said, with my approach, hey, how's it going, sir, you must be the, you must be the one. He was like, his, I told him about before I got a joke out, he said, get off my property before I blow your fucking head off. Excuse my French, Montana. So you know how I felt. I said, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> who pissed in his cornflakes? That's how I was thinking. I didn't say nothing. I said, okay, we're going to see you around like a donut. Then I started walking off. What's crazy is that when you're so positive, right, and a person is negative, they will get mad and try to steal your joy. I know y'all done seen this. Like, you know, you got you to gotta kill people with kindness and baffle them with BS, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I faked it till I make it. I was like, he ain't going to steal my joy. So I was like, I'm going to see you around like a donut. And he was like, oh, you think it's a game? And he went in his car and grabbed a gun. He started following, no, true story. I'm from Detroit. I've seen a lot of guns. Like, he started following me with a gun, right? So I called my manager. Now, bear in mind, I just made a, a, a bet in the meeting. You see what I'm saying? To beat this guy in this neighborhood. And I'm like, I know he ain't work this neighborhood. He didn't call them and tell them to pull a gun out on the chocolate kid. So anyway, that's, so anyway, I, I, I didn't, I'm just, all type of stuff going through my head. So I jumped on the phone, called my, I said, look, whatever you're doing, you got to come get me right now. You just dropped me off in the neighborhood. This dude just pulled a gun out on me. Because like usually when I get out the vehicle, I do like a couple of jumping jacks exercise. I don't know if, how y'all do it, but my workout is like Kanye West workout. I do jumping jacks. You know, I do a couple push-ups, get my adrenaline rushing. Then I say me a salesman prayer. You know, like one of my favorite books is The Greatest Salesman in the World. And one of the scrolls is, today I greet this day with love in my heart. I will persist until I succeed. All of that become my prayer. So anyway, I was stronger than the Holy Ghost because I had a great salesman prayer. Then this guy, you know, like misery love company. So I was already positive and I had my goal that I was going to reach. And then this guy came out just negative than a neutron bomb. So I didn't let him affect me. So anyway, I called my manager. I was like, look, whatever you're doing, you got to come get me right now. This dude just pulled a gun out on me. He started laughing. He said, what? He said, you Kenny Brooks. He's like, you were just selling all those whiff tickets in the meeting. He was like, look, I'm like 10 minutes away from you. I'm in traffic. He's like, do me a favor. He said, look, if he's still following you with a gun when I get off the phone, just call the police because I ain't going to make it in time. So I hung up the phone. When I turned around, dude was going back to his house. So I said, okay, he must have thought I was on the phone with the police. So anyway, I started walking, right? And it was a school to the left. Kids was out doing recess. And then I started walking towards the school. I said, let me walk towards the school because now I'm using Street Smart from Detroit. I said, I'm going to walk towards the school because there's kids out because if he come back out acting a fool, he ain't about to shoot me in front of no kids. I know he ain't that crazy, it's broad daylight. So anyway, I started walking towards the school and I seen a lady like open up her door. So when she opened up her door, I ran over there. 
I'm like, oh yeah, this is my savior right here. I ran over there. Like I saw Jesus. She closed the door immediately. Like she had one of those doors, like y'all seen Friday before, you know, the, in California, they got those black screens where they can see you, but you can't see in a house. She had one of those doors. So I started banging on the door. I didn't even do the salesman knock after that. It was like a rescue knock. I did one of those. So she opened up the door, come to find out the lady was blind. This is a true story. I wrote a whole TV show about it. It's crazy. Y'all gonna see it in a couple years because I'm still writing anyway. So <laughs> no, real talk, true story. So anyway, I knocked on the door. She opened up the door. She said, how can I help you? I said, don't shoot, just a chocolate kid working hard. She said, is you dark chocolate or light chocolate? I said, what, this a chocolate contest? I said, I'm dark chocolate. She said, you chocolate like African American? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, oh my God, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Come to find out. She was like, no, this is exactly what her word. She was like, what are you doing in this neighborhood? She said, I'm surprised one of my nephews ain't terrorized you. She said that it's been a war going on. She said, yesterday my brother got murdered by African American. She was like, I don't know, why would you be in this neighborhood? And I was like, I'm sorry to hear that. My condolences go out to you, you and your family. And then she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I thought you never asked. Went back into sales mode. I said, you see the spot right here? <laughs> like, no, for real. I said, you see the spot right here? She said, wait, wait, I don't got time for no sales pitch right now. She said, wait, do me a favor. She was like, come in. She let me come in her house. She had her little stick though, so I knew she was blind. Cause I was thinking like, why would you say as I'm dark chocolate, light chocolate? You don't see my face? Like, so I put two to two together and I saw her walking with the stick like she, so I said, oh, this lady is blind. So then she was like, so, okay, so what are you trying to sell me? I was like, well, I got the best thing since cake and ice cream. It clean any and everything except bad credit. She started laughing. She said, look, she was like, do me a favor. She said, how many bottles you got on? I was, I was like, I got four bottles. She said, promise me one thing. She was like, I'll buy those four bottles right now if you promise me one thing on one occasion. I said, what's that? She said, can you call someone to come pick you up? I'll let you stay here until they come because I don't want nothing to happen to you. I said, cool. So I sold her the four bottles. Boom, I called my manager back. This has been like 10 minutes. I'm like, where's this dude at? So I called him back. I said, look, I got some good news. I done emptied my bag. Now you got to come get me. I said, I'm not quitting. I just need you to come get me and put me in a different neighborhood. He said, if I come get you and put you in another neighborhood, you're going to forfeit the bet because you betted the guy that you was going to beat him in this neighborhood. I said, I'm pretty sure he didn't work this neighborhood. I know he ain't worked this neighborhood. He worked this neighborhood <laughs> and they ain't putting nothing on him. Oh, this is a trick to it. So anyway, he was like, all right, here I come. I'm pulling up right now. I come outside. So um, when I came out the door, I'm walking out the gate. He, the van was like where that room is at. Soon as I get out, like five, four wheelers just cut me off. Like just blocked me. The one guy jumped off the four wheeler with a gun. Same dude that pulled a gun out of me. He was like, you thought I was playing? He was like, what you, he was like, you still in my neighborhood? He's like, my brother about to pull up in a brown native pride truck. If you don't get in, I'm gonna blow your head off. True story. So I, I started walking like, and I looked back and my van took off and left me. So I was like in tears and I was like, what the heck is going on? Like he left me, I promise you. Look, it's crazy how this, this is, this, I'm telling you everything happened for a reason. So look, the van left and the brown truck pulled up within seconds. He was like, the dude opened up the door and had a double barrel shotgun in my face, like get in right now. I'm walking, like I'm this close walking and uh, out of nowhere, an unmarked police car happened to like just rescue me. Like just came. When the police came, it was only one police car. He just hurry up. Soon, soon as you heard the sirens, boom, the truck like bagged up. Like he did like 50, like real fast. Like he ain't even like in reverse, reversed it. And then they just start scattering, going down. Just, I don't know if y'all know about Indian reservations. It's like the ghetto. They got like dirty diapers, pit bulls and banded up. Like I felt, I thought I was at home for a minute. But anyway, like they started going through ditches and everything. Like, and the police just came to me. And I was like, I almost shit on myself. Excuse my French, but real talk. Like, and like he just, he's like, what is, he was like, what are you doing in this neighborhood? And I, I couldn't even really talk. I was like devastated. I was like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, like I couldn't even, I was speak. This is the first time that Kenny Brooks can even have a comeback for that. I was like, I don't know. Like, I was stuttering like Ruben. Like, he was like, get in the car. And then he just started calling back up. Now this happened like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. True story. Like they didn't find these guys till like seven o'clock in the evening. So anyway, he got me in a car doing pol like a police report. And he, I'm, I'm like, did the lady call you and tell you to come get me or something? Or what? He was like, no, I've been working this area for like two years. It's been a lot of crime going on within the last couple of days, murders and shootings and kidnapping. He was like, I'm surprised somebody dropped you off in this area. I was like, I really couldn't even say nothing after that. So anyway, like 6.30, 7 o'clock, they had like helicopters and everything out there like looking for these guys. So they finally captured them. They, they captured like four or five of them. Anyway, I only remember the two dudes. I remember the one dude that was in the truck that told me to get in and the one dude that pulled a gun out on me. I just remember them, I pointed them out. I felt like 6'9 before 6'9. I didn't even want to do it. I'm like, yeah, that was, I did a no look. I did a John Stockton, like, yeah, that was. Yeah. I didn't even want them to see my, no, for real. So I pointed them out, boom. So they ended up letting me go. 
So my, the company van came and picked me up. Oh, I gave him the blues. The whole Detroit came out of me. I said, I can't believe, I snapped. Like, I said, I can't believe y'all left me out here to die for a $40 bottle of clean. I've been y'all top salesperson for five years. Y'all got me twisted. Y'all got to get me back home. I quit. I will never work for I'm going to tell anybody I know that y'all scantlers. I'm never, boom. So anyway, they flew me back to Detroit. So this 2009, true story. Like I said, I was a top salesperson from 2004 to 2009. It's getting interesting, ain't it? Y'all yeah. want to hear what happened next? Yeah. Okay, I just want to know, because I know I get long-winded. I got big lips, I can put it on a brick. So I'm trying to entertain you at the same time. It's, it's funny, I'm making jokes out of it because, you know, laughter is the best medicine for the heart. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's a true story, but I'm a comedian at the end of the day. So anyway, they paid for me to go back to Detroit, the company, because I, I quit. So they flew me back to Detroit. So this was like November 2009, right? So like three months go by, it's like February. I, I tell my I done celebrated Thanksgiving, Christmas, my birthday, my birthday day after Christmas, I done celebrated New Year's. Now it's, it's, about, it's like a week before Valentine's Day. It's like the beginning of February. So they sent me a subpoena in the mail to go back to California to testify against these guys. I'm like, I do not want to go. But my mother talked me into going. She's like, you got to go, it's mandatory. You can go to jail, all this. So they flew me back to California, boom. So they fly me back to California to testify, right? So as soon as they picked me up, I knew it was real because they had like a little thing with your name on it, like Kenny Brooks, a dude with a suit. As soon as I got my baggage, she like had a, I'm like, what the hell? I feel like President Obama. This was before Obama, like, but yeah, I said, damn, I'm presidential. And then they take me like in the middle of like Palm Desert or something, Palm Spring or something, like in the desert. I'm like, dang, they got me like secret service. I'm talking, I felt like 6ix9ine for real, witness protection and everything. I'm like, dang, I feel like a snitch. So anyway, so they had me in the middle of nowhere, so I had to get up like six in the morning, drive all the way back to LA. So we had breakfast, and then I had to go through the metal detector to get ready to go to court. So I get there early, like 7.45, and we had court at eight o'clock. So anyway, I had to use the restroom real quick. So I go to use the restroom, and as soon as I'm walking in the restroom, this big Indian dude was walking out. He was like, hey, you motherfucker, and then he went like this, and I took off, like, I was like, as soon as I see him, I took off and ran. Like, I ran past the two, like, what's crazy is that when I got picked up from the airport, it was two dudes with suits like that. With, like, one was holding the sign and one had opened up the door to let me inside like a tinted out Tahoe. They escorted me into the courtroom. When I tell you I ran past them, cause I'm like, how y'all didn't see this dude just threaten me? But I guess they were sitting on the side of the bathroom waiting on me like security. So I ran out, I didn't even say, I just like, somebody trying to kill me and I ran out and I ran past the elevator into the exit, it was like exit stairs. And I ran down the stairs and I just ran out of the courtroom and I just kept running. Then I seen like a gas station. So I ran behind the gas station. I ain't even going to, I ran behind the gas station, started kicking the back door like, Please help me, somebody help me. Dramatic and everything. I ain't know what was going on. I, I just remember the kidnapping. I said, this is the sequel. I, I seen Scream 1 and 2. I seen I Know What You Did Last Summer. This, they ain't about to make a movie out of me. I'm kicking the door, boom. So anyway, the dude come out taking out the garbage. He's like, I, can I said, please call the police right now. He said, you know the courtroom and the police cross you. I said, I don't care. It's a setup. Please, I just came from there. Call the police. So anyway, he called the police. When I tell you like 10, 15 minutes came and nothing happened. I said, let me use the phone again. So I called my mother. I was like, I told you this is a setup. Ma, you got to get me back to Detroit. She hit me with the same thing. She hit me with a 12 year old. What I tell you, I got in the door to door. Boy, I ain't got no money. That's exactly what she hit me. So she was like, ain't you in California? I was like, yeah. She said, you know that company you quit? They still in California. Why don't you call them? So I called the company. I didn't even want to call them. That was like my last resort. So I called them. I said, look, I know y'all paid for me a flight a couple months ago, but I need you right now. Like, I've been y'all top rep for five years. I'm stranded in California. I had to go to a subpoena. Somebody tried to kill me. Can y'all please get me back to Detroit? I'll make it up later on. Boom. So he was like, the, my manager was like, let me call the owner. I'm going to get back to you. And I was like, no, call me back. I'm going to call you back in like one or two minutes if you don't answer. So I called him back. And he was like, I just talked to the owner. And this is what we came up with. You could do one or two things. He said, we can get you a Greyhound ticket back to Detroit. The only thing is that your Bus don't leave until eight o'clock tonight. So you'll be have to sit there for like the next 12 hours. They was like, or we can get you a flight. He was like, cause we'll pay for your Greyhound ticket. It's only 200 and some bucks from California back to Detroit. You're just gonna be on the bus for three days. I thought about it like, I'm not doing that again. It was like, or we can get you a flight. It's like 600 bucks. 
The only thing is that we have paid, the owner said he would pay half of it and then we can come get you and put you in a nice neighborhood, monitor you, and then we can pick you up about five or six o'clock because your flight leave at nine o'clock and then we'll just cover the rest as long as we'll use your commission off what you sell today to cover the rest of your flight. So at first I was like, no, I'm just gonna take the Greyhound. I ain't not gonna know the rest for y'all. Y'all got me twisted. And then I was like, no, they probably know where I'm at. They probably watch me right now. I ain't even about to chance me staying in a Greyhound for 12 hours and I gotta call y'all again. I'm gonna be running all over Los Angeles. Like, no, uh-uh. I said, you talked me into it. Come and get me. So they came and got me, boom. They dropped me off in Tarzana. Y'all familiar with Tarzana, California? Boom. Crazy, Jamie Foxx stayed in that neighborhood. This was 2010, do your research. He stayed in that neighborhood. Anyway, so this crazy, right? So they dropped me off. So I'm knocking, but I'm knocking with pain. I'm not even, like my mind ain't even in sales mode. I'm just thinking about, I like, I, that's what I'm saying. Like it's so, like it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. And that's why I say you gotta be stronger than the Holy Ghost. You gotta, like one thing I learned, my grandmother told me, she said, if you put your problems on the table and somebody else put their problems on the table, you'll pick your problems back up. Because your problems be like, dang, I ain't get no sales today. Dang, people was rude to me today. Then somebody else put their problems on the table like, dang, I just found out I got cancer. I got two weeks to live. You will pick your problems up. Like, you know what, mine is temporary. Anyway, to make a long story short, so I, like all of this was going on. I'm like, you know what, I know somebody got way bigger problems than me. So I, I paused, because I went to like 30, 40 doors not getting no sale. And before I gave up, I just did a, a self-invasion. Like, I just, I just started like, just talking to myself. Like, it's like the best help in the world, self-help. So I just started talking to myself, telling me positive stuff. Then I said another prayer. When I tell you when you speak stuff into existence, that's the best medicine in the world because like when you fake it till you make it and you actually tell yourself, raise your hand if you ever said, oh, I'm, the next house gonna buy. The next house is a deal and it actually was a deal. Raise your hand ever happened. See what I'm saying? That's exactly what I said. You know what, the next house about to do it, like Nike. I go to the next house, this old white man came out super cool. He was like, oh, how can I help you? He was a lay down. I said, oh, that's what I'm talking about. Your neighbor said you was cooling on the other side of the pillow. You see the spot? So like he really brought my personality back because I was thinking the wrong way. I was like, oh, they trying to, you know what I'm saying? And I remember like I just told them yesterday, like if you're looking for sympathy, it's in a dictionary right next to syphilis and symptoms. So you don't want to never think the wrong way. So anyway, I said before I even get weak minded, I'm about to hurry up and get, so I'm about to turn up. So he opened me up. It took for him to be super positive for me to get back super positive. So anyway, he was like, look, if it clean hard water, I'm gonna buy your product right now. So I walk in his house about to clean up hard water. I see he got pictures of Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Nick Van Axel, Magic Johnson. Like he got pictures with all the Lakers, Shaq. Like, and I'm like, you must be a doctor. He was like, how did you know? I was like, man, you got a lot of patience. All your other neighbors, they've been working me like a Hebrew slave. He started laughing. He was like, no, I, actually I'm a doctor for real. I'm a Lakers doctor. Like when they get hurt and injured, he like do they, like he do the operations on the final. They told they MRI, ACL, stuff like that. And I was like, dang, that's amazing. He said, you ever thought about doing stand-up comedy? I was like, I do do stand-up comedy. This is a vehicle that's driving me to my success. Cause they said, if you can go to somebody's door that you never met before and make them laugh with your sense of humor, you wouldn't be afraid to perform in front of an audience. So this is a stepping stone. He said, you know, that's funny, cause you know Jamie Foxx stayed right across the street. When I tell you he said that, I ran out of his house so fast. Like I turned into a groupie, I wasn't even a salesman no more. I said, oh, this is my big break right here. I, ran, I left my product in this house. He had to call me back like, hey, you left yo. I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get that. I gotta sell him this. So I ran over there, right? But Jamie Foxx had a gate, like he had a gate. Like his, his gate was like right here and his house was like two miles that way. So I, I pressed the buzzer, boom. And it just started ringing like a telephone pole. So I'm like, so I'm, I'm just, I'm, like, I'm praying like, please, please answer, please answer. So then he never answered. So I go to the next house. The next house was this lady that y'all just saw this video that recorded me. Was crazy. Let me tell you how God worked in mysterious ways. So I'm about to go to the next house and I turn around and it's a brown Maybach, two-tone Maybach pulling into the gate. I ran back over there like, oh, this him. I ran back over there, but he had one of those sensory gates. He had one of those gates like, like soon as your body Tip the gate, because the gate was closing, but when my body got towards the gate, it started opening back up. I walked out, I was like, oh yeah, jackpot. He, and and then when I walk, when I, as I'm walking in the gate, I see his camera like looking at me. And he got on the intercom. He was like, wait, wait, what are you doing? What are you doing? No trespass. I was like, okay, COD. He was like, all right, one second. So we pull in the garage and he come back on a golf cart. And I'm talking about as he getting closer and closer, I'm like, this really Jamie Foxx. I'm talking, I don't know if y'all ever been like starstruck. Like I was like, I was like, cause this is somebody that I like, one of my idols. Like I watch him with like Will Smith for Fresh Prince and Martin Lawrence and you know what I mean? Like, like, like Family Matters and Full House and all these, like all of these TV shows that inspire you want to be a comedian. And I used to watch the Jamie Foxx show on there. So he pulling up 
And he must have seen my spray bottle, like my cleaner, like on, like on my leg. He's like, wait, 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 you trying to sell me something? I thought you said COD. I was like, yeah, come on down. He started busting out laughing. He was like, boy, not only is you funny, you funny looking. He was like, boy, with a grill like that, I bet you you sneeze, you could bite a hole in your chest. True story, he just started roasting me like, like, no, I'm talking, I met him from him roasting me. So I was like, oh, you got jokes, huh? I said, boy, you got all that money with them little earrings. Your earrings look like sugar. And then, as soon as I said that joke, he's like, you know what, I like you, come on, get in. Like, that's why I say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. He told me to get in on the side of his passenger of his golf cart, and he drove me back to his house, down to his house, and then he's like, he just took me to his guest house, he just told me this whole story on how, he, he was like, you remind me of myself with your personality and your jokes, he was like, man, what do you do out there? Was crazy, he like, he used to be a shoe salesman, he got adopted, he was from this small town, Tyler, Texas, he said, he introduced me to a stepdad that adopted him, and then he told me, he was like, man, I'm telling you right now, I don't know what it is, but I never in my life actually invited a salesman to come to my door. You one of a kind. He just straight told me that. He said, I'm telling you, like, you on your way. I don't know what God got for you, but I'm telling you, like, your life about to change. He was like, just like mine. He was like, I didn't give up. He was like, I used to be, a, he was like, let me tell you how much I love comedy. He said, I used to go to comedy clubs at night and I used to knock doors in the morning just to like pay for acting school and different stuff. And I, like, I was like, that's the same thing I'm trying to do. He was like, until one day he knocked on this guy door and the guy didn't buy his shoes and he said he was on the corner about to quit and the guy pulled up and saw him. He was like, hey, you know, I like your presentation. I'm sorry I didn't buy from you. Like, but you ever thought about doing comedy? He was like, yeah. He was like, well, I'm, I'm doing an audition tomorrow for a living color. You should come try it out. And that's how he made his big break. Like off of a customer that didn't even buy from. Him. So that's what I'm saying. Like you never know like what door you're gonna knock on. You never know, you might knock on somebody's door and you sell a mama, the daddy, the brother, the cousin, all of them by sold it. Now you done made 90 to 100,000 dollars one door just by believing, not giving up. What's crazy is that then he told me that he used to go to comedy clubs and they used to always pick females before the guys because they was women chauvinists. And he said, you know, I got something for you. He said he wrote down on the list, Jamie Foxx, his real name, not Jamie. And they looked at the list like, oh, Jamie, that must be a girl. All right, next up, Jamie. And he came up with Wanda, with the wig on, with the lips. And, like, and, and that's how, and I just started crying when he was telling, I said, man, he was like, what's wrong? I was like, man, I wasn't even supposed to meet you. This is God. I was like, because like before I met you, I was about to quit my sales job because I got quit, kidnapped by some Indians. He was like, what? What you was doing at 7-Eleven? <laughs> I'm like, I went at 7-Eleven. I was working. At, he just got jokes like that. You know what I mean? And what's crazy is that anybody in the room remember that movie, The Django? Yeah, he was filming. That's how long ago this video went viral. He, was, he only came home because he was filming the Django and he was on his break to get his script to like go back to work. So like I had to hurry up and like sell him and then like he signed the bottle and then I go to the next door and soon as I knocked on the door, they came to the door with a camcorder. I'm gonna be quick like Nestle, be like Michael. You know that video y'all just watched? That was next door to Jamie Foxx. And that's how that video happened. She filmed me, right? It's 2010. February. The same day she filmed me, like I saw, because I told you we used to start like 12 o'clock. Like we'd go, we have an early morning meeting, boom, get motivated, listen to some Eric Thomas, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Dale Carnegie, audio, whatever, boom, Robert Kiyosaki, whatever we listen to, get motivated, boom. Then we go eat breakfast like 11, 12, then like 10, 11, we go eat breakfast, because we had a meeting from like 8 to 9. Then 9 to like 11, we go eat. And then 12 o'clock, we on doors. So I saw Jamie Foxx, and, and this happened around like 1 o'clock, 1.30. When I tell you about five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, people start coming out just buying. I'm talking about, it was a different type of buying reaction. I'm talking about, they was buying like, oh my God, I just saw you on the internet, you the viral. So I'm like, viral? Now this 2010, I didn't even have a phone. I'm like, what is, this was when Justin Bieber and Soulja Boy was the only people I knew that went viral. So I'm just, I'm like going door to door and like, I'm telling you, this video generated millions of views within hours. Like she filmed it and uploaded it right, like ASAP, like Rocky, like just put it up there. And I, I'm, I'm going to doors and they just buying like crazy. Like, like they buying like hotcakes and I'm like, what the hell is going on? So anyway, when I tell you that I didn't know I had a viral video to 2017, like this went viral 2010. How I found out the video went viral, right, is because y'all heard of Ridiculousness, the show? MTV, they reached out to me, right? They reached out really to the company. I got 10 kids, right? I know this is a whole nother thing. I got 10 <laughs> kids. They like eating and I like feeding them, right? But I got four baby mamas and a wife. I just got married. But look, my wife right now, she was in an office, right? She worked in an office like a secretary, right? And she the one like go through the paperwork, right? And she happened to get an email. Like what's crazy is when I went viral in 2010, 
Ellen reached out, Tyler Perry, Kevin Hart, Jim Carrey, all of these big comedians, they was trying to find me, right? But they contacted the company, because I don't know if you remember on this video, she was like, what, can I put this on YouTube? I was like, yeah, she was like, which one? I was like, Kenny Brooks, take this book. So people zoomed in and saw the company name and the number. I never had a number. So they calling the company trying to get in touch with me the whole time. So I end up getting an email through ridiculousness. And my wife, who is right now, she was my girlfriend at the time, she saw that email. And she was like, you just got an email from ridiculousness. You need, you need to call them, boom. So they gave me the number of the executive producer. So I called them. And they was like, um, we want to pay you $150 to come on our show because we just bought the rights of your video from Sabrina Morgan. I was like, wait, 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 Sabrina Morgan, what do you mean? He said, we just paid her $20,000 for the video. I said, wait, 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 wait. So you're gonna pay me $150 and I'm the one in the video and you pay the lady $20,000? At the time I had like six kids, I didn't understand it. I said, hold on, let me call you back, boom. So I called, I don't even know who I called, but I called somebody that gave me the information to contact the lady, right? So I contacted the lady, I said, excuse me, I said, can I ask you a question? She's like, yeah, I said, um, so you mean to tell me you've been making money off of this video and you ain't break bread like the Last Supper. I got kids and everything, right? Boom, so anyway, she was like, um, well, she kept on saying she never made money, boom, right? So look, this was crazy. So I moved to LA, right? I moved to LA and I had um, got a manager, got an agent, boom, and then I got an entertainment lawyer, boom, so I was trying to, I wasn't even gonna sue the lady, I was just trying to find out if she was really making money. So that's when I found out that this lady the video, when I found out 2017, when I moved to LA, the video had over 300 million views on YouTube, right? It was crazy. The video went so viral that, like, you know how you see a video and it be viral and you wanna share it? When I looked it up on YouTube, it was over like 200, like probably one or 200 of the same videos. That's why if you see this video, the video, she took the video down, it had 300 million views. When I tried to sue her, and I, only reason why I tried to sue her is because she lied to me. She made like over $800,000 off the video, didn't give me a dollar and say she ain't make nothing. What's crazy is that, right, how I found out, I moved to LA, I was going to Content House. You don't know how they got like collab cribs and like Content House where you could go do like sketches with different influencers. So, cause I was a considered influencer, I went super viral. People wanted to work with me anyway, so I go, I'm doing skits and stuff. I, I, like, I'd have met everybody that you can think of that do social media, like, like big names. Like, so anyway, I'm doing sketches and stuff. And I'm telling my story to a couple of influencers. And Jamie Foxx's nephew happened to be there. They was like, oh, I forgot his name. They was like, you know that's Jamie Foxx's nephew. So he pulled out his phone and he FaceTimed Jamie Foxx. He was like, Unc, remember that video you was talking about about the guy that sold you the cleaner? He right here talking about you. And then he got on the phone, he's like, yeah, that is him, he's still ugly. Then we just start roasting, I swear to God, back again. And I was like, look, I just wanna thank you for calling your neighbor and putting me on YouTube and everything. He was like, let me tell you how racist my neighbor was. That's why I moved out of that neighborhood and moved a thousand oaks. He said, look, right while you were selling me, right, my neighbor called right after you left my house. She was like, hey, Jamie, I wanna give you a heads up. It's this black guy that's a uh, case in the neighborhood. He's suspicious, I think he's breaking the people's house. He was like, no, he's not. He's an aspiring comedian selling a cleaning product. I just bought the product from him. Maybe you should open the door and listen to him. He probably will sell you too. And that's the only reason why she recorded me because she thought that I was in a neighborhood breaking in houses and, and if the neighbor said I was really breaking the houses, she had it on video. She only uploaded the video because I guess after they watched it, it was funny and she generated millions of views. So then she copyrighted the video. And then when I took her to court and I explained this to her because I got the information from Jamie Foxx himself, then she gonna like, you know what? Forget all that, I'm just gonna take the video down and ruin your career, and she took the video down. But actually, that was like a gift and a curse, because I thank God that that happened, you know what I mean? Because after she did that, the best revenge is massive success. So after that, I just monetized everything, you know what I mean? I grew two million followers on TikTok within six months. Like, I, I just started, I, I'd have been in movies, I did TV shows, I'm doing podcasts, I got a Joe Rogan podcast coming, I'm doing Nelk Boy. Like, I got so much stuff that's going on. I've been doing a lot of speaking gigs, you know what I'm saying? Training, coaching, like, it, I, I'm still, you know what I mean? So I just learned from my mistakes. So I say that to say this is that, you can't really just give up, you know what I mean? No matter what, like that's my testimony to like be able to like give back to the community and let people know like if you think you're going through something or if you're having a good day, you can have a greater day. What's good when great is better, you know what I'm saying? And tough times don't last, tough people do. You know what I mean? I wanna share one last thing with you. I got this uh, episode called Suicide, right? Like I said, I got a TV show, documentary slash TV show, and it's, it's amazing because I'm like the face of door to door. And I ain't trying to brag, and I'm just saying that like, 
Like, I'm like the pillar. Like, people know me from like door to door. Like, like that. Like, I actually went viral. So, for me to have like a door to door movie, you know how many doors is gonna open up for door to door? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's a blessing. And I've been writing it, and it's really funny. And one of my episodes, like, the first episode is called Suicide because it's not really funny. I like really saved this lady's life. And I wanna share that with you, and I'll be out your hair like shampoo. So, anyway, we was in, we was in Mefford, Oregon. Anybody familiar with Mefford, Oregon? It rains a lot, like, and that's what I'm saying, like, every, I don't I didn't work every day. I was just telling Lee, like, I worked out here, I sold clean, I worked Henderson, Boulder, you know what I'm saying, I wouldn't even mind going out and knocking doors with y'all just to show you, like, because what I show people is just how to have fun, like, I don't even care if you, like, my attitude, like, I care if you buy, but I don't care if you don't buy, because Jesus didn't sell everybody, <laughs> so I know everybody ain't gonna buy, but you gonna be looking like crazy when you come out sad and you talk to the rest of your neighbors and everybody got solar and you don't, you know what I mean, like, yeah, yes or no, maybe so, let me know so I can go. Cause I ain't even gonna play with you. It's a numbers game. You know what I mean? Like, like, like Biggie Small said, all these girls, I gotta like one. All these guys, I gotta fight one. All these customers, somebody gonna buy from me. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't even get mad if you don't even buy from me. Like, I, like I'll be like, you know what? Okay, it's been fun, I gotta run. We gonna see you around like a donut. Cause I already know I'm on to the next one, like Jay-Z. Somebody gonna buy from me. Somebody gonna make up for it. You know what I mean? Cause I'm gonna keep giving my best at every door. I'm not gonna give up. Long as I give you, long as I give my all, that's all I might need. So anyway, we in Metro Oregon, it's raining like cats and dogs. When I said that I came like the Jesus of sales for the company, like it was crazy. Like the whole company didn't even wanna knock on doors. It was raining. It was like, oh, we not working in the rain. We gonna get wet, boom, boom. I'm like, we out here. Watch this. Matter of fact, y'all don't wanna knock. Come on, I take all. I took like 10 people to a door, right? So, no, for real, just imagine 10, you open up the door and you got 10 black people at your door. <laughs> this lady was ecstatic. She was like, oh my, like, and, and, like when I tell you she cussed us out and I was like, I ain't even gonna, I started blaming the trainees. I said, man, see, y'all didn't mess up myself. But look, I, I handled it expertito. She came out, she was like, she was like, get off my property right now before I call the fucking police. I'm like, she just started going crazy. After I let her go crazy, I said, ma'am, can I just say one thing? I'm sorry for disturbing you. We just walked the country mile to make you smile. As a matter of fact, your neighbor said that you was gonna adopt us, feed us some fried chicken so we can get off work. Like when I tell you that she had a teardrop, like she, she, like I don't know if you, I, I don't even know what kind of facial expression it was, but I like one thing that I'm really great at in door to door, I know how to read a person. I can tell off five seconds if you're gonna buy from me or not. Like just off my energy, I can, like I, like I just did a documentary. Anybody heard of The Secret? Okay, rest in peace, Bob Proctor. Like, I got, like, my energy and my talent is so amazing that before Bob Proctor died, he reached out to me and put him in his new movie documentary called Beyond the Secret 2. It's coming out the end of this year. Just off of, like, me, like, reading people. I just got, like, a gift. I can, like, automatically, I'm telling you, companies go out and they have me go shadow their people, like, new people. Like, like, I, like, a company just called me. That's why they just, I just told him they just brought me back out there. Because there's one sales dude, he was there for, like, a month. He was a college kid, he was in debt for like a hundred and some thousand dollars with like financial aid and everything. And then his friend got him to come sell solar for uh, titanium. Cause his friend was making a killing without a machine gun. He made like a hundred K in like a month. You know what I mean? And he was like, look, I made a hundred K. You don't even need college. You can come out here and you can work off that debt, boom. So he went out there thinking he was gonna be like his friend. And he was, he quit like three times a day. So they called me like, look, I need you to come train this dude. And I went out there and I was like, look, let me just see what you're doing. So I go to the door, number one, like he said, he sounded like the clear eye dude, clear eye, solar. Yeah. Like I said, bro, with that personality, nobody ain't gonna buy from you. Let me, look, I don't even know what you know. And watch how I do it. Hey, how's it going? You must be the one. The one to answer the door? Real quick, and I'm be like Michael Jackson to beat it. I'm gonna give you space like shuttles. Did you get some yet? You ain't get a chance to go green like a Ninja Turtle? Man, and they, I'm t the neighbors ain't call you. Are you serious? Man, good friends, hard to find. Can I ask you one question? What side is the meter on? Is it on the right or the left? On this side. Okay, do you got a smart one? A smart meter? I don't know. Yeah, because my mom got a dumb one. Yes, I still in kindergarten because I couldn't scribble. You know, like, just playing a game. And then he was like, I said, you see what I just did? I don't even know nothing. Conversation, rudination. And then after that, guess what? I left. They just called me back and said, dude just made 90K. This is a guy that was about to quit solar. You see what I'm saying? And he went to the door with me. I don't even know solar, but what he learned from me is confidence. Like this dude believe in himself. You see what I'm saying? And now it just made him believe in himself. So when I say that is that I took 10 people to the door in the rain, right? And the lady cussed all of us. She cussed me out, but you a part of me. 
I felt like that was my kids. Like, y'all just, like, you know, y'all just got, so anyway, she cussed us out, boom. And I said, see you around. I said, look, I, I promise you, I didn't come to make no, we just walked the country mile to make you smile. But you know what? I apologize for whatever you're going through. We're going to see you around like a donut. And as I was walking off, that's my favorite line, we see you around like a donut. I'm walking off, the lady, like, she wanted to smile so bad that she had a smirk and a tear dropped her eye. And she said, you know what? She said, I'm gonna be honest with you, you was a special person. She was like, I'm so sorry for being rude to you. Today just wasn't my day. I just lost my son in a car accident. I apologize. And I said, well, my condolences go out to you and your son. Let's have a moment of silence, right? True story. I, this is not even really funny. It's like really like, and that's what is balanced because I got like a lot of episodes that's funny and this wasn't really funny. This would really happen. So I said, let's have a moment of silence. We did a little moment of silence, right? So then I, we was about to leave. I wasn't even trying to sell a lady. She said, you know what? She was like, um, so you, you, you sell a cleaner? I was like, yes, ma'am. Am I black? I was like, that's why the Brady's got a bunch. So I'm still trying to win her over, like trying to get her to laugh, like to forget that I'm even trying to sell you. She said, you know what? I got this spot on my carpet. If it clean it out, bye. So all 10 of us walked in her house. I'm looking around like, I hope they don't call the police. See 10 black people walking in this white lady house. So anyway, I walk in, I'm about to clean a spot and my coworker noticed a gun on the table. So he tapped me, I'm like, I'm like, oh. I was like, oh ma'am, don't shoot. Just because I thought it was a set. I'm like, damn, she done let us, she about to pop all of us. So I was like, don't shoot ma'am, just the chocolate kids. She was like, no, 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 let me tell you. She was like, right before you knocked on my door, I was about to blow my brains out when I just got the news that my son killed himself. She said, no, you okay, you okay, I cleaned the spot. And she didn't even blow her brains out. I still talk to this lady to this day. She got a real estate company and everything. So just imagine if I would have came out nasty to this lady. You see what I'm saying? Forget a cell, I would have lost a cell. We would have lost a, a human being. You see what I'm saying? So you never know what people are going through. So when you're knocking on that door, you gotta put, look, you gotta take your shoes off and put their shoes on. You see what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it ain't, a lot of people, the, the, the key that people don't understand is that you be trying to sell the product more than you trying to give back. You know what I mean? Service. He who's the greatest among us with our greatest servant. You know what I mean? Like I got another episode, it's just amazing. I got, like I'm talking about I work Quarter Lane, Idaho. All black people in a KKK area. Oh, I became the KKK. Oh, don't shoot, I'm the KKK too, the cool color kid. <laughs> First door I knocked on, dude was like, get off my porch, nigger. I said, where that nigga, he owe me $5. <laughs> and he started laughing like that and I went and cleaned the spot and he bought, he bought my product without even trying to buy it. Like he didn't say, oh, that's a great product. Oh, I love this stuff. What's your name? He said, I will take some of that nigger juice. Matter of fact, put my nigger juice right here on the, on the concrete and go knock on my neighbor door. And when you go knock on my neighbor door, I'm going to pick my nigger juice up and leave your $40. When I went and knocked on his neighbor door, I came back. My $40 is right there. And guess what I said? Oh, he want to be, oh, he want to play like this. Okay. I seen a little white girl say, I said, excuse me, can you tell your mommy there's a nigger at the door? She ran in the house like, mommy, 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 there's a nigger at the door. My, look, mom ran outside, saw me, she's like, oh my God, smacked her daughter. Psh, I am so sorry, we are not like that. We just moved in this neighborhood. I don't know why she said that. And she was like, how can I help you? I said, it's just $39.95 and she bought my product. I pro True story, that's my episode called The N-Word. I'm telling you right now. So you see the difference with suicide and that? See, my perception was my reality. So that's why I say, what, what, I don't know what y'all got out of that. What I got out of that, my own story is that you can't, if one person don't buy from you, you can't think the whole neighborhood not buying. See, this one person was racist or rude to me, and I thought everybody was like that. You see what I'm saying? You can't think the wrong way. Thomas Edison said, if you think you right, if you think you can't, you right. If you think you can, you still right, because them your thoughts. See what I'm saying? So that, that's what it's all about. It's all about just being positive. A PMA, a positive mental attitude. This is my last thing, and I'm, and I'm, because I, I, I ain't trying to take over. It's just that I just love sharing information and love making people smile. That's what it's all about, putting a smile on people's day, brighten people's day up, getting people fired up, go out there and make a killing without a machine gun. I, like I said, if I know what I know now about so I would, oh my God, it's crazy. Like I'm telling you right now, like this is the best industry in America. Like, you, if you don't know, you, you, I don't know, you must be sleeping under a rock. Real talk. No, but like, it was two salesmen. It was a negative salesperson and it was a positive salesperson. And they both went to Iraq trying to sell some shoes. And the negative salesperson was like, dang, they ain't got no shoes over here. We ain't about to sell nothing. And then the positive salesperson was like, oh, they ain't got no shoes? Oh, we about to make a killing. So it's all about your mindset. You see what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, let's turn our thinking up. Let's stay positive. Let's hang in there, have fun. And I guarantee we're going to have a productive day, and that's my time. No, yeah, that, I promise you we do that. I even got a night pit. I know it's dark. I'm dark, and I definitely don't glow in the dark. But can I say one thing? <laughs> <laughs>
Like, no, I swear to God, I didn't got a sale at 1.30 in the morning, I swear to God. Not knocking at 1.30 in the morning, but I'm talking, we knocked to like 9, 10 o'clock and had a flat. Like, we was two hours out, because we used to drive like far out. And like, we had a flat, and like, uh, Triple A didn't come to like 12.30 at night, and then we end up selling him. And like, by the time we got to sell, it was like 1, 1, 1, 1 30, like one time, when, as soon as he fixed the vehicle and we got the tire on, it was like 1.30 in the morning. So yeah, selling never stopped. So yeah, it was, uh, it was about the, yeah, we do not, oh, it, trust me. <laughs> the most sales is written in the least amount of time. So sales is a mystery, you know what I'm saying? You could like, you could start off and get the rolling and get the day over with, or you could be out there all day. It just depends on your attitude, you know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like both. <laughs> number one, like, faith is number one. You know what I mean? Like, like if we go outside right now and you see them leaves blowing right now, you know what's moving them, them, them leaves? What's moving them leaves? What's making the leaves blow? The wind, right? How do you know it's the wind? Can you see the wind? It's faith, you got faith that it's the wind, right? So it's just faith. Like, I just believe, like, you know what I mean? Whatever you're looking for, looking for you. If you're looking for, like, negativity, you're going to find it. If you're looking for success, success is right next door to failure. You see what I'm saying? The longer it takes for you to get the sale, the closer you is to one. So I feel like that it's faith in my belief. Like, my belief system is really strong because I'm like, man, like, I, I believe in God, like, 100%. And, like, I know that, like, everything happened for a reason. Like, this was God's work. This was God's plan. You know what I mean? Like, this was the cards I was dealt. I just played it right. But at the same time, I know that I didn't cheat success. You can't cheat success. You know what I mean? Like, when I came in the game, and I didn't tell y'all this, is that I bought 10 notebooks just to put knowledge in them. I had a notebook for one-liners. I had a notebook for comebacks. I had a notebook for jokes. I had a notebook for human interest story. I had a notebook for pr product knowledge. See what I'm saying? Whatever you put in, that's what you get out. If you want to be the best, you got to do what the best do. When Kobe, the reason Kobe was the best, because after they won or lost, he stayed in the gym shooting thousands of jump shots. See what I'm saying? Like Emmitt Smith had that Super Bowl commercial. After he won the Super Bowl, he was in the gym working out. And they say pain, you, count, you can't count pain until it start hurting. Like when you're doing push-ups, you can't count it until it start hurting. See what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just how, you, how you take it. You can see the, the glass half full, half empty. But I look at everything as a positive side of everything. It's always a positive side of everything. You see what I'm saying? Like, is it like is, everybody got a story. You know what I mean? Like, it's some people that you could like turn this into success or you could, we all one decision from being a, a failure of success. You know what I mean? So I feel like that at the end of the day, it was my belief and it was my journey that I just stayed on that yellow brick road. I had my blinders on. Yeah. It seems mm -hmm. like now, but it yeah, but it, it was like always practice, though. You know what I mean? Like, like when you in Rome, do as the Romans. Like, I noticed, like, because I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't, I wasn't this great. I became great because at the same time, I went through stuff, and when I noticed it didn't work, like I would go, I would go write a joke down, and I would use that joke at the door, and if majority of my customers is buying and laughing off that joke, I'm gonna keep it. But if I'm turning a lot of people away, I'm not gonna keep that, you know what I mean? But it was time that I couldn't control my attitude and I lost the sale because of my attitude. And I said, you know, I ain't gonna do that again. That's my, I learned from my mistake, you know what I mean? So we all gotta learn from our mistake, you know what I mean? So that's what I did, I learned. Like I learned from that, okay, I ain't gonna do that again. Chinese proverb said, if you can't smile, you should open a store. Like, I'm not about to be in the neighborhood mean and like look like I'm not having fun, then get to a door and start smiling. They like, oh, he fake. 
I just, I just, you don't even know that people be driving in a neighborhood and see you in a neighborhood. Like every car that go by, I'm waving. Hey, all right, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, because I don't know, this person might drive to her house and she's like, dang, he was just waving at me. You get to the house, they be like, yeah, you ain't ever knocked on nobody's door. They be like, oh, I saw you in the neighborhood early. I was wondering what you was doing. Yeah, nosy people get it too, like DMX said. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm waving. Like, yeah, okay, yes, ma'am. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, like, that's what I learned that. I learned when I was walking through the neighborhood being down because I ain't get a sale. And I was like, and I'm dragging my feet. Then I get to the door. Nobody ain't buying. Then I was like, you know what? I ain't doing that again. So now I fake it till I make I'm waving at everybody. All right. I remember one time I knocked on the lady door and I promise you, like soon as I saw the, the peephole get dark, I said, oh yeah, she coming to the door. I start talking to nobody. So she opened the door. I said, all right, yeah, mix it with water. And look, my, my van come. She looking like she reached her neck. I like, who is he talking? I said, I thought you never asked. Like I wasn't even talking to nobody. I was talking to myself and I got a sale. And that's another thing, you can use that as a referral. You can, you ain't, you, like, I, I, no, for real. I, you, you know your neighbor? You know, you, you know your neighbor next yeah. door? Yeah. What's his name again? Johnny? No, not John next door to John, I sold John. Oh, Thomas. No, not Thomas, I sold Thomas too. He didn't want to send me over next door to Thomas. <laughs> now I'm going to John door using you. <laughs> hey, you must be John. Yeah, blame it on Jeff. He said you was cooler than the other side. Like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm using all of that, it's techniques, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm learning from my mistakes though and I'm growing through everything, every situation. 